I'm going to be playing one of my all-time favorite games, College Hoops 2K8. I'm going to be starting off with St. Francis, a small school out of Brooklyn, New York. They play in the Northeast Conference. Their head coach is going to be Kyle Lee Watson from above the rim, point guard out of Brooklyn, New York. Went to Georgetown, played in the league a little bit, spent the last two years at St. John's as an assistant. In his first year as a head coach, he went 21-12, and 13-5, second in the conference, and they ended up winning the conference tournament championship. So with that, they ended up playing in the NCAA tournament. So in the tournament, they didn't go far. They ended up losing by 25 points to Arkansas, but everyone had an input. They just didn't have the dogs to keep up. So the trick to this legacy, I'm going to have two coaches. My next team is going to be UC Riverside out of the Big West. They had a better year, not by much, just a little bit better every year than St. Francis, but their coach is going to be Billy Hoyle, white man can't jump, played at UC Riverside and was an assistant coach at UC Riverside for the last decade. In his first year as a head coach, they went 23-9, and 13-3, and won the conference. They won the regular season conference championship, and then they won the conference tournament championship. They had a better team. Um, they won just a few more games. It was like a two-game difference in the first year. Same amount of wins, I think, in the conference. It's just, I think, they had a better squad. Halsh, senior, 21 points a game. It's just tough when you're St. Francis and you got to kind of like build from scratch. And I feel like this, this UC Riverside team just had a little bit more. They ended up making it to the Sweet 16. They upset Pittsburgh in the first round by seven. You know how March Madness is. They beat Utah State, a team that was more their style, barely by two. And then they ran into the bus saw, which is Memphis, by 33. Dang. And what I really want to do now is we're just going to run through every year and see who won. And I tried to keep it as real as possible. So when they ran into that bus saw that was Memphis, Memphis actually made it to the championship game against Kansas, which is what happened in spring 2008. Tyler Hansbro was the best player. This kind of stuff with like the coach of the year, Coach Cal, defensive player Dorsey, big man, Hansbro, and then Mike Beasley, freshman of the year. Like this kind of stuff I can't control, just like we didn't win or get anyone on the first and second team All-American or the freshman All-American teams. But we're going to go to the Big West and see what we won. So we won the conference championship, conference coach of the year, conference player of the year, Jack Hall's 21 points. We got Halsh on the first team. We got Augustine on the first team. And we didn't get anyone else. And Hoss is a senior, so that's pretty tough. And in the Northeast, we got Bracey on the freshman team. You know, it's crazy that we finished second and we really don't got no one on any of the conference awards list, basically. We didn't get no one. We didn't win nothing. We just out-schemed everybody, I guess. So this is year two. We're in 2009. We just want to see a little bit more improvement. So first up is St. Francis, and we won the conference this year. 29-7 overall, and then 14-4 in the conference. So just a little bit more improvement. This is the first year I got to recruit. So I got some three-star freshmen. Um, then I also have some junior college players that came in ready to play right away. So that helped. Just a little bit better. I mean, last year we won 21, now we won 29. So, Tank Navarrete, though, he's solid. I don't even know how I ended up with him, but he's a solid little dude. Little <laughs> dude's like 6'8". Um, in terms of the tournament, we got into the second round this time. We beat Charlotte. That's more of a team that's our style status. And then we just got beat 20 points by North Carolina, the eventual champs. 
and then let's go to Riverside. Imagine that, 34 wins in his second year. That's big. I mean, like I said, I think he had the better situation to start off with. And um, this year, little steps, 34-3, and 14-2 and in the conference. Let's just see how the stats went, though, because you see those freshmen in there playing. Like I said, it wasn't just junior college. Look, we ran through the non-conference schedule. We lost two games in conference and then one tournament game. That's crazy, though. 34 wins in year two. Seegers was good. Atkins was good. Number one in everything in our conference, offense and defense efficiency. And then another year for, for us in the Sweet 16. We beat Valparaiso. That's a team we should beat. We narrowly escaped. Upset Ohio State. And they got some dudes on that team. And we ran into an eventual champion in North Carolina, and they humbled us real quick. Beat them by 50. Dang. So that's how year two went. And now we'll just go look at the awards and who won it. Like I said, can't control who win these awards. North Carolina National Champs. Kevin Love, Player of the Year. I don't even know who this is. I think he's a rock star. Izzo, Coach of the Year. Love, Big Man of the Year. Random freshman from the, from the Bronx. Now, Leslie Kelly, right? He's going to be an important player to pay attention to. He's a shooter. Can pass the ball, handle the ball. He's out of Queens, New York, originally from Los Angeles. 6'5", 224, average 25. 1,000 point scorer. He was a walk-on for St. John's. He worked with Coach Kyle Watson closely to build his name up and get to start. Shot, shot 44%. Dang, 44% from the three. And then 73% from the free throw. Started 63 games in his two years. At St. John's was second team All-American and first team All-Conference. So pay attention to him. we we'll see him again. We got Paulden on the freshman All-American team. He was a three-star center. So... I'm not really surprised that he ended up being that good, especially at a small school. So Riverside, we got the conference championship again. Conference coach of the year again. We ended up getting the conference freshman, another three-star, Blaze Atkins. Seeger's first team all-conference. He's a senior. Atkins, freshman. Augustine, senior. So we got three. And then we got Richards on the freshman team. Atkins again. All right, let's go to the Northeast. We got Wayne Stewart, freshman. Oh, Warren, my bad. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Paulden, because I know a dude named Wayne Stewart. That's why I started tripping. We got Douglas. We got Neverett. So we got a few dudes so far. Way better than last year. And then Paul and made first team all conference. That's way better than last year, bro. I say we had nobody conference freshman of the year. Paul then. I finally won coach of the year and then the conference championship. So with all this success comes new opportunities. New Mexico State is looking for a coach. Either of my two coaches could take the job. But I'm thinking with such success in the Big West, this might be a job. For Coach Billy Hoyle. They went 18 and 13, 12 and 4 in their conference. They ran through their conference. They got a solid little team. Obviously, they lost to who they're supposed to. I mean, Michigan State, you're not supposed to win that. 13,000 instead of what, 3,000? So when these opportunities come, you got to take it. So, Coach Billy Hoyle, he's going to be moving to Las Cruces, New Mexico after two years as the head coach at Riverside. So, NMSU, welcome your new head coach, Billy Hoyle. Another big development, Corey Stokes. He's going to be leaving Villanova and coming over to St. Francis to play for Coach Kyle Lee Watson. So, it's a Big East caliber player. 
He can shoot the ball. He can handle the ball. He's a solid player, 6'5", 200 pounds, out of Bayonne. He averaged 11 as a freshman and 2 as a sophomore, so that's the reason he transferred. So that's another big name. So here we go. Year 3, St. Francis, 36 wins, bro. 15-3 in the conference, easily won the conference back-to-back years. And now it's all starting to come together. I mean, now I got two classes, recruiting classes worth of players, and it's showing. First in the conference, 100% attendance. Dukes stepped up. And that's a junior college player that I brought over. And we made it all the way to the championship game. So we're taking the place of Butler um, in this time period, 09-10, 10-11. Butler actually came on crazy. So we beat Houston in the first round handily. So we're taking Butler's place. Alabama AM and barely beat them. It's crazy, too. Like, the teams that are closer to us, we barely beat. And then we actually ended up knocking out New Mexico State in the Sweet 16. Then we beat Clemson in the Elite Eight. And Dukes had a big game. We beat uh, Southern Miss barely in the Final Four. And then we lost to an eventual champ, Duke, in the championship game. He had 10 assists, Dukes, but wasn't enough. All right, so let's go to Las Cruces. 31 wins in his first year. And I was just looking, right? They won, what, 18 last year before he got there? So that's a big improvement. Easily won the conference, too. It wasn't even close. 14 wins in the conference alone. They went 18 the whole last season, bro. Like I said to you, you got to take these chances because you go to a place like this where there's not much expectation, then you win 30 games. It's like, okay, now we on a trajectory up, really. Because imagine, like I said, too, when you're doing it at small schools with not much resources, you got to imagine, like, let me get to a big school. So, ran through that conference, that WAC conference. <laughs> no pun intended. And then, yeah, they made it to the Sweet 16, and they just ran into a bus. So, so we beat Texas A&M as an upset. Beat Manhattan. And that's what I'm saying. The smaller teams that you should beat by 30 is all close. So, let's go run through all the awards, see who won what in year three. Duke obviously won the championship. Damn, that's a good team. 34-2 and two in the ACC. I don't even know who this is. I don't know who this is. <laughs> it's a bunch of random. Coach K, I don't know who that is. Heron Goldie, I remember him growing up. And then a bunch of randoms. No one on the first team All-American or second team All-American. No one on the freshman All-American. And that's the thing, too, like with the small schools. You really just got to put in work. Just put your head down and just grind because you're not going to get too many awards. So conference champions, again. Conference coach of the year, again. <laughs> so Tommy Dukes, Poole, and we get first team for Dukes. First team for Paulden again, and he's hurt. We get second team for Tank Navarrete. So that's a name to pay attention to. He's coming out of Jamaica. Um, he went to community college in California, but he's 6'8", 215. Um, he's all right. I mean, there's nothing you see here that he stands out at. He averaged 13, five rebounds. I mean, he's okay. Almost had 1,000 points. He's not a special player. I mean... He's okay. I feel like he's good for the culture. He's good for that team, St. Francis, but he really didn't even start. Paulden was a starter, so he came off the bench and was second team all conference both years. So, I mean, he's solid, three star out of Juco. And then freshmen, we got two more good freshmen, Minor and Poole. Imagine that. We got so many damn centers, bro. 
All right, let's go to the WAC, see who won what in my first year. Didn't get to obviously have no recruiting class. We just came in with whatever they gave us. We got first team with Ba and then first team with Chris Williams. And Chris Williams is tough. He's out of Pennsylvania. He won the player of the year, conference coach of the year, conference champions. So year three, not bad. Coach got his contract renewed for five years at St. Francis. And now we're going crazy. <laughs> 40 and one. 18 and 0 in conference, bro. Imagine that. Number one seed in the tournament. Just a little by little, man. Little by little. Every year getting a little bit better. And Dukes is now a senior. So last year he won conference player of the year as a junior. And it's crazy because he only averaged, what, like a few, what was it, 16? Now he's averaging 18. Then we got Corey Stokes coming right behind him with 14. That I mean, and that's what it is. We just have a crazy team. So we made it to the championship game again. We just got a crazy team first round, beat the crap out of Wright State like we should. Pepperdine, bro, beat him by two. A little bit too close for comfort. VCU beat them by 30. Stokes had a good game. And that's the thing. Like, we just got too many players. We upset Indiana. And is it even an upset when you're the number one seed? And then we beat New Mexico State in the final four. That's crazy, too. Like, now we're meeting each other deep in the tournament. And then we lost to Connecticut by two. Barely. Stokes had a big game. All right, so we flip it over to Las Cruces. 35 wins, 15-1 and one in the conference. Ridiculous. <laughs> what you going to do with us? What you going to do? Like I said, I knew this conference was going to be sweet, but dang, I didn't expect it to be like candy. Just ran through. And that's what I was saying, too. So now we're meeting, what was it, like a couple years back we met in the Sweet 16, or last year. And then now we're meeting in the, Semifinals. It's crazy how these two coaches have just been so good. Troy Bolton and Williams. <laughs> That's another name that you're going to see a little bit of. Troy Bolton came over to us. Where did he go? Cal in the beginning. Then he transferred over to come back to New Mexico. So we beat Ryder. A little bit too close for comfort. Bolton coming off the bench, though. Crazy. Beat the crap out of Rhode Island. 30 points off the bench for Bolton. We beat Kentucky. That's got to be an upset, even if we were the higher seed. Got to be. Mexico State don't beat no Kentucky. We beat Duke, the number one seed. Come on, bro. 23 off the bench. 19 and 10 for Williams. And then... We ended up playing St. Francis in the semifinals. So now we'll just go look at who won what. We at that point with it. So UConn obviously won it, keeping it as real as possible. Craig Brackens, player of the year. I don't know who that is. Coach K, coach of the year again. Parsons, defensive player. Brackens, big man. I didn't even know Brackens was a big man. No one on the first team, All-American, no one on the second team, and no one on the freshman team. So now we'll go over to the Northeast and see what we won. Three straight, right? Three straight conference championships. Conference Coach of the Year, three straight. Tommy Dukes, Player of the Year, two straight. He's tough. I mean, he can score the ball. He's just little. That's all it is. Six foot one seventy nine out of Jamaica. Obviously, that's why him and Tank bonded, and they both came to play for Coach Kyle Lee Watson, being from Jamaica. JUCO players played together in junior college. He's a solid little player, man. I, I will say he's a little bit better than Tank, for sure. But um, obviously, got to start somewhere. He started all the games he played in. Solid player, two-time conference player of the year, two-time first-team all-conference. He was a four-star JUCO player, so he really didn't have to come to St. Francis. But 
Then we got Corey Stokes. He made first team all conference, averaging 14. Paulden, again, averaging 14. And then freshmen keep retooling. Cleveland, Blaylock. So setting this team up for the future, no matter what, really. All right, now we're going to go to the WAC, see what they got going on, what did they win. We got Draven out of California, Bain out of California. We got Archibald. <clears throat> Excuse me, we got Archibald out of California too. So Troy Bolton, first team all-conference coming off the bench. Williams, first team all-conference. He was the conference player of the year. Dang, 6'8", 260. Draven, freshman of the year. And then Williams wins player of the year back-to-back. -back. And obviously conference coach of the year and then conference champions. It's weird, too, because it's like a little California team. So coach got his contract renewed. And here comes another opportunity. So UTEP rival to New Mexico State. They went 2-24, and 24, bro. That is horrible. They went 1-15 and 15 in conference. And it's like, one of those things where we have to entertain it. And not only because it's one of the schools I've gone to, but it's really because 12,000 fans, it's a step up. It's a major. It's not even a mid-major. So we got to go. Coach Kyle Watson accepts the job at UTEP. So El Paso, here comes Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn in the house. And there goes the end to another video following Coach Colin Watson from starting off at a small school in New York to four national championships. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon.